Welcome back to Biosignaling on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss the basics of TGF-beta signaling. And TGF-beta means transforming growth factor beta, and we're going to talk about its biosignaling pathway. And so just like in the previous couple of videos, such as the one we did on Wnt signaling and notch delta signaling, we're not going to go into all the biological effects of TGF-beta uh, because it depends on the organism, the time of development, and also the cell type, and so it's just way too complicated. So all we're going to do is talk about the signaling pathway. And what you'll find about this signaling pathway is it's going to function very similar to receptor tyrosine kinases, RTKs, that you may have seen in a basic biochemistry course. Uh, it's going to be very, very, very similar, at least the first half of it. So first of all, we have TGF-beta receptors, and we have type 1 receptors, which are in blue, and type 2 receptors, which are in red. And initially, they're going to be dimerized like this. We're going to have a heterodimer of the receptor 1 and receptor 2 type, okay, like this. And on the intracellular side, they're going to have these light blue domains, which I've shown. These are essentially kinases, okay, these are kinase domains. In some texts, they may put these as KD, kinase domain. And here's one right here. And I have a second one right here, okay? And in order for you to have TGF-beta signaling, obviously you have to have TGF-beta, but these two uh, receptor complexes, the one over here on the right and the one over here on the left, they're going to have to come in closer proximity to one another. Right now they're pretty far apart. The way that they come in close proximity is when you actually have TGF-beta. So TGF-beta will actually form a dimer. These are two proteins, two molecules of TGF-beta, and what will happen is they will come in proximity like this, and they will bring these two receptor complexes together, okay? Notice they're a lot closer here than they were on the left, okay? So these receptor complexes come close to one another. Now, in a very similar manner to RTKs, which do autophosphorylation or cross-phosphorylation, these kinase domains will first of all phosphorylate themselves, but they'll also phosphorylate their partner kinase domains to where all of these will actually become phosphorylated. Okay? So for example, this kinase domain where my mouse is might phosphorylate uh, this kinase domain, it might also phosphorylate one to the left of it. Okay? The point is all of these are going to become phosphorylated, and when phosphorylated, they become activated. Okay? Now, we have, uh, inside the cytoplasm, we have transcription factors. And normally, um, transcription factors such as SMAD2 and SMAD3, they're going to be in their um, unphosphorylated state like I've shown here. They're going to be inactive. They won't really go into the nucleus and do anything. However, uh, whenever these kinase domains become active upon TGF-beta binding, these kinases actually phosphorylate SMAD2 and 3. So SMAD2 and 3 become phosphorylated and they actually form a heterodimer. So notice they're actually dimerized right here. It's a heterodimer because they're technically different proteins. One's a class 2 SMAD, one's a class 3. Now in addition to 2 and 3 dimerizing, we also have a SMAD4 cofactor that's going to come in here and bind. And so we actually now have a heterotrimer um, with SMAD2 and 3 being phosphorylated. In any case, this complex right here of SMAD2, 3, and 4 can actually enter the nucleus and bind to regions on the TGF-beta target genes. And when this comes into the nucleus, again, uh, you'll turn on those TGF-beta target genes and they will be transcribed and eventually translated. And you'll get uh, whatever biological effects you have for that cell uh, based on TGF-beta signaling. Okay, so again, this is very similar to RTKs, at least in the first half of it, except actually the, the process is very, very uh, short. You just phosphorylate some SMAD proteins, SMAD2 and 3, SMAD4 comes in, and then this complex, this heterotrimer, then moves into the nucleus and affects transcription. Okay? So that's pretty much all there is to TGF-beta signaling, okay? So hopefully you got something out of that video. Please make sure to like this and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the next video, we're going to go over another kind of pathway called hedgehog signaling. So please join us in that video. Make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you.